Hi everybody, so uh, my name is Julie Lovett and I'm a visual artist from Castlemaine in County Kerry in Ireland and what I'm going to talk about tonight is why we all should return home. So I grew up in the rural village of Castlemaine in Ireland and like a lot of children as I got older I wanted something totally different. I wanted anything but the farm environment. And I remember so well as a teenager being so embarrassed when my father would come to collect me from school in his old farmer jeep that stunk of cow dung. And when you opened the back door to sit in, there was no back seat. The back seat was a bale of straw. So as you can imagine, I was completely mortified having to sit into this every day with my friends completely laughing their arses off at me. Um, so yeah, as you can imagine, being a farmer in 1998 just wasn't cool in my world. But uh, in school, uh, I was really, really bad at maths, like awful, but I was good at art. And I think I was lucky that my parents never pressurized me to go down a, a conventional route. And they supported my interest in art. And so I ended up going to art college. And in 2009, I moved to Belfast to do a Master's of Fine Art. So Belfast is a city in Northern Ireland. It's located on the very top of Ireland and Kerry's in the very bottom. It's probably about the same distance as Melbourne is to Sydney. So it would have taken me all day to go home and I never really went home. Um, so yeah, college, college life was great. But what I really, really wasn't prepared for was life after college. Uh, suddenly, I found myself completely on my own. Um, I no longer had the college structure or the security of the college environment. Um, and I found the following years quite hard. So, like, I was really, I was trying to keep my art practice going. I was on the dole. I was working numerous waitressing jobs just to try, try to pay for studio rent, art studio rent and house rent. And to make matters worse, at this time, uh, the Arts Council of Northern Ireland put a two-year ban on me from applying for funding because I broke one of their, their rules. But uh, I still think, to this day, two years was just a way too much for someone just out of college. So uh, yeah, with all this going on, I think I became quite disillusioned and I felt, um, I felt rejected by this art world around me. This art world that was supposed to be supporting me. And I think it really fed into my inner cynic and it kind of, it really chipped away at my confidence. And yeah, like I, I, like, I, was, I was embarrassed to tell people I was an artist, like, cause I felt like I was failing. I felt like I wasn't succeeding in this path that I chose to go down. And um, yeah, I, I felt really uncomfortable in my own skin at that time. And I avoided going to art openings. I, I avoided going to exhibitions. And yeah, I just think living in the city at that time, I felt, I, I felt really insignificant and really I, I felt, I felt really alone. Yeah, so, so yeah, anyway, I, look, I knew, I knew something had to change and the thoughts of moving home was always there in the back of my mind, but I was still, I was struggling with this notion that moving home in your mid thirties was failing. It was like seen as this non-progressive move. It was like going backwards. And these thoughts like really held me back for a really long time. But, but I did start to visit home more often. And suddenly something changed. Something switched, my attitude changed. Um, there was a comfort in the familiarity of the landscape. Um, I started to see the landscape and suddenly uh, the mountains that had always existed around me meant something new or, or just they, they meant something. And, and I was longing for home. Um, 
And really from this point on, I only have my parents to thank because they knew, they knew I wasn't happy. They, they knew I was struggling. And one day my father rang me and he said, uh, he said, Julie, uh, if you want to come home, there's a place here for you to stay. And, and so I did. And in 2020, I moved back to Kerry and my parents welcomed me back uh, unconditionally. And, and really it's from this moment on that my actual true discovery began. Uh, since moving home, I discovered that I actually didn't need this desired um, urban city vibe, the city art scene to survive as an artist. I, I discovered that, in fact, I did have choices and I choose to create my own art world with what was ready made right in front of me. Um, there was all the space. It started with our family farm. I started to treat the farm and the village itself as a kind of expanded studio space. Yeah, and suddenly, actually, I had the biggest studio space I could ever ask for. And the best part what it was, it was completely free. I have discovered that collaboration is something more exciting to explore as an artist since moving home. Um, I am drawn to this idea of collaborating with people who aren't artists, non-artists, and moving home was a perfect opportunity to, dis to explore this uh, because I was, and I still am, the only artist in the village. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, it's such a change from like the artist saturated city that I left behind me. Um, but where better, or no, who better to discover this collaborative process with than my father and my brother, who are farmers? Um, I got a real kick out of this idea that I was constantly collaborating with them without them even knowing it <laughs> or even caring for that matter. Um, I find it fascinating that we both have this shared interest in the land but for completely different reasons and I love this idea that we both work with the land. I, I work on the land too. Um, since moving home, I've started giving weekly adult painting classes in my local community centre in Castle Main. And what comes out of these classes, uh, to me, is just, it's a small bit of magic. There is something so refreshing, um, or it is so refreshing to experience the creative perspective from people who aren't trained in art making. Uh, for example, one day in one of my classes, I was doing a, an observational drawing class and one of the women found the drawing aspect too, too, too hard. So what she did was she just basically drew out the shape of the object, right, what was right in front of her, and labelled it. <laughs> um, another woman, she, we were, she was just drawing a banana, but like the banana, it was just, it was too difficult. So what she was, she, she took the banana, put it on her page, and just traced it out. And I just thought the, this was pure genius. I loved this kind of practical and actually quite creative solution to like uh, technical drawing. Um, the conversation that comes out of these classes, um, I think, I find it, find it really special and really empowering. I think there is a, an infectious energy and power that comes from local group dynamic or, Luke, or group interaction. Um, I've discovered that loneliness feels different living at home than living in the city and that I actually am content with rural loneliness, something that I never thought I'd be content with, but I am. And I think that's that's because of this innate sense of connection I have with the village and with the people. Um, I was born into this environment and, and I know that I'm not alone. So, um, so, so to refer back to my, to my message, uh, why we all should return home, 
Well, uh, for me, I have learned that life is not linear and it is okay to go back. And I know that this can be a difficult and daunting process, um, but for me, returning home is much more than a physical move. Returning home is a feeling. Returning home means returning to and exploring the truest version of me that I possibly can be. And I try to express this in my art practice. Um, I now approach my, my art practice with a curiosity and potential of what home can be. And I hope this is something that can resonate with you listeners here tonight. Uh, so I'll just finish on one final discovery, and that is that I discovered your parents do still embarrass you, no matter what age you are, but, uh, but your amitai only the better for it. Uh, so that's it. I hope this has been kind of relatable and hopefully, I don't know, a nice talk. <laughs> <laughs>